Most runners focus on pace and mileage, but ignore the one metric that can make them faster with less effort, a lactate threshold. If you've never tested yours, you're training blind. I'm Dr. Ray Peralta, physical therapist, run coach, and exercise physiologist. For over a decade, I've helped everyday runners improve their performance, hit new PRs, and stay injury-free by applying science-based strategies to their training. Today, I'm going to show show you how to find your lactate threshold, one of the most important performance markers in running, and how to use it to run faster and longer with less fatigue. We'll break it down in five clear methods from lab test to field test, and I'll show you how to use your la- your threshold, your lactate threshold pace and heart rate to design workouts and boost your performance. So let's start with the, basis, the basics. What is lactate threshold? It's the tipping point where your lactate builds up the blood lactate in your body. When you're doing some type of uh, endurance activity along like steady state to keep increasing the pace, uh, your blood lactate builds up faster than your body can clear it. This happens when your aerobic system can't keep up and anaerobic energy kicks in. And just to clarify, this can also happen with uh, speed or anaerobic workouts as well. Uh, but for the sake of this, I'm going to be focusing on runners. So why it matters. Improving your lactate threshold can improve hard effort feels it makes hard efforts, it can feel easier as you get a more trained, more aerobically trained and more trained with your lactate threshold, allowing you to hold your race pace longer. Let's say you're training for a marathon, you can hold marathon race pace for longer, delay fatigue, train smarter, and not harder. Think of it like your body's endurance speed limit. Push it higher and your performance improves. However, uh, if you're not trained, right, you're going to may fatigue out, you may hit your lactate threshold a lot sooner if you're not as well trained, right? Maybe you're more of a beginner runner. So uh, how to find your lactate threshold? Uh, method number one, a lab test with an exercise physiologist or a similar prof- uh, health- healthcare professional who will do this lab test usually done on a treadmill if you're a runner. Uh, most accurate, it measures your blood lactate at different speeds and then see the onset where the blood lactate starts to hit a threshold where it, it exceeds the body's clearance um, threshold. Um, it's it could have or some cons. It could be time intensive, costly, where you have to pay some money to do this lactate threshold test. Um, oftentimes requires repeated testing as your fitness levels changes, right? You may have to repeat the test a couple times to actually start getting more accuracy as your fitness levels improve. Um, and the, your threshold is usually the, um, at your pace or the heart rate where your blood lactate starts to uh, go above four millimolars uh, per liter blood uh, liter in your blood when they're pricking your fingertip or they're pricking your ear to get your blood lactate. They're analyzing you. Sometimes it's combined with a VO2 max test with put the VO2 mask, um, the mask on your face and you're looking at your VO2 max plus your lactate threshold. So sometimes it's combined as a VO2 max and a lactate threshold test. Uh, but you can also just request a lactate threshold test alone. Uh, the downside may vary day to day, and it could be hard to access if you don't have access to an exercise physiology lab in your community. It might be hard or it might be very far away or you have to go to some university or hospital setting to get it done. Uh, method number two, uh, doing a 30-minute field test, a time trial. Uh, so this is the one I recommend for most people. It's easy to do. You don't really have to go to a lab, right? And then you just have to find a place where you could run. You could do this on a treadmill or you could do run outside. I recommend doing it outdoors, obviously, if you're training outdoors. Uh, warm up, then run hard for 30 minutes, right? You warm up for 10 minutes or so, right? Easy warm up, and then you just go into a hard run, and then you average the heart rate in the last 10 minutes of that 30 minute time trial, and that'll give you your heart rate at your latte threshold heart rate. You can also just see your pace. You can see, hey, what was your pace in the last 10 minutes? And you can also estimate that's your pace and heart rate at your latte threshold. And there's some research that show that this test could be uh, pretty reliable and very similar to the data you get from um, a, f- a lab test with an exercise physiologist. Okay, method number three is the RPE, the rating perceived exertion or the effort scale. Uh, there's different effort scales, but usually uh, zero to 10 or one to 10 scale, six out of 10, or some people say seven out of 10 is considered your uh, lactate threshold effort. So what you're going to do, you're just going to run and progressively increase your pace until your effort feels like a six out of 10 or seven out of 10 and note your heart rate and pace at that effort. And that's usually your estimated lactate threshold heart rate or lactate threshold pace. Uh, good for athletes with exper- experience. If you're a complete beginner, it might be hard to gauge what an actual six out of 10 effort is for you. If you're not too familiar with an effort scale. So you, I still recommend doing the field test. But as you get more accustomed to your training, you could also use the RPE scale as an alternative. Uh, 
The fourth method, the talk test. This is where you recite a phrase, uh, whatever, maybe a, a song lyric, or you got to just have a conversation with yourself at an increasing speeds, at different speeds. And when talking becomes just uncomfortable, that's your threshold, your threshold heart rate, your threshold pace. A uh, key thing to note, when you're measuring your heart rate, get, use like a heart rate monitor right here. I got a Garmin, right? You can just get a Garmin watch, turn it on, get your heart rate. Fairly accurate. If you want more accuracy, you get like a chest strap. So you get the chest strap and the watch, and then the garment, the chest strap will sync to your watch. You can see your heart rate, and then as you're doing these tests, you can see, hey, what is your heart rate at the, for example, the, the time trial, or your heart rate doing the um, RPE, rate of perceived exertion, or even bring it with you to the lab when you're getting tested with the exercise physiologist, so you could also have the data to compare on your, uh, you know, your chest strap and your watch combo. Uh, so, yes. Anyhow, then you could also compare that and get your heart rate data. Uh, the good thing about these watches like the Garmin or similar types of sports watches uh, for runners, and then you'll have the data already put on your on a chart for you. So let's see, did the time trial or doing the talk test. You can see, okay, this is at this speed that I was doing the, the talk test that um, I got uncomfortable. So that would be your heart rate and pace or speed uh, for threshold. Um, it's practical beginners and it's a, when pairing with the heart rate monitor, then you could also then look backwards and look at your different heart rate zones. And then the fifth method is a do it yourself lactate, blood lactate analyzer kit. It looks similar to like a glucose, um, a glucose meter, uh, right? uh, but say you're using blood lactate strips to see, okay, you get your sample of blood uh, as you're training at different uh, efforts. And then you either finger prick or ear prick, and then you analyze your blood with the, the device and you'll plot, okay, this is your, your readouts. Again, you're looking for a certain threshold. Uh, devices may have different units of measurement, but usually about, again, that four millimoles per liter um, for blood lactate level will indicate that, hey, that's your lactate threshold. So maybe it occurs at this certain pace and heart rate. Um, these kits are usually about $200 or so, plus or minus. Uh, again, but they could be costly, and then you have to buy the strips if you're repeating these tests. It could be kind of messy, right? And it could be kind of painful if you don't like pricking yourself, pricking your th finger or your ear. But it's usually pretty precise. But again, it's not user-friendly. Maybe if you're a more advanced runner, you want more precision with the data, you could do this. Um, but for the cost and kind of the inconvenience, I figured, hey, if you're going to pay for it, might as well get it done with a lab, with an exercise physiologist. But this would be a do-it-yourself if you don't have access to the exercise physiologist or you just really want more precision in doing it yourself. So once you get your lactate threshold, then you could uh, map out your different training zones. Uh, there's different training zone models. I'm a big fan of just a five-zone training model using uh, many types of systems of uh, running. So like a zone one is considered very easy recovery and warm-ups or cool-downs. And it's usually at le under 82% of your lactate threshold. Zone two is easy, 82 to 89% of your lactate threshold heart rate. Uh, that's usually due for easy and long runs. Zone three is moderate, which is 96 to 100% of your lactate threshold. So the top end of zone three is usually your lactate threshold heart rate or pace. Uh, you could use this for your tempo runs, fart licks. Zone four is hard, is about 102 to 106% of your lactate threshold heart rate. Uh, so you could use it for intervals, like a two-minute interval or an eight-minute interval. Uh, zone five is very hard. These are for like sprints or hill repeats. It's usually 107 to 110% plus of your lactate threshold heart rate. And pro tip, your threshold is going to change over time, right? So retest your lactate threshold heart rate or pace, right? Get your lactate, your, your watch out, your chest strap monitor, and then do another repeat 30-minute time trial or um, talk test. Uh, or lab tests, as you could see, okay, as your fitness improves, maybe every three months or every six months, right? See how your fitness levels improve. You can see your lactate threshold, your heart rate, or pace lactate, lactate threshold start shifting so you could hold it out uh, faster paces as you're getting fitter. And once you've got your lactate threshold, uh, pace, or heart rate, and then here's different sample workouts you can build around it. Obviously, is the tempo run or a threshold run. Now, tempo run is not always synonymous because sometimes people do tempo runs a little slower, but you can do tempo run at lactate threshold or at threshold pace. For example, you might warm up, right, 10 to 20-minute warm up at like a zone one, very easy, or zone two. And then uh, 20 to 30 minutes at threshold pace, uh, zone three to zone four. Again, that's the top end of zone three or the bottom end of zone four would be your threshold heart rate or threshold pace. And then you cool down for like 20, 20, 10 to 20 minutes, right? So there's a tempo run workout. Another one I like is five minute intervals. This is where you just do a repeat interval, either on a track or on a road, uh, six by five minute intervals at the threshold pace. And then you'll jog or walk for recovery. Maybe you'll walk for recovery about a minute, minute and a half 
great way to push the edge of your your fitness and improve your speed endurance. Uh, another variation, just eight minute intervals, very similar to the five minute intervals. Maybe you'll do um, five by eight minutes at the rational pace. Again, you want to recover, jog or walk, you know, from like a minute to two minute uh, recovery. Again, an- another way to boost your stamina. Um, and then for marathon, uh, people who train for like half marathons or marathons, you may do like progression long runs is where you build up to like marathon pace and then finish the last 20 minutes at the threshold. For example, maybe do three miles easy, three miles at marathon pace, and then 20 minutes at threshold pace. I say threshold pace is going to be a bit faster and then you go down to like slightly lower after your three miles at marathon pace and then you cool down. Um, and then also hill repeats, also do hill workouts. Also, you could do my like threshold effort or RP, right? Like six or seven out of 10 RP, maybe find a hill or uphill or an incline on a treadmill, two minute incline, uh, repeat that 10 times for like a 20 minute workout. And then you either jog or walk back down. If you're doing it in an outdoor hill or if you're on a treadmill, just hop off the belt, catch your breath for like a minute or two, and then sprint up again, uphill again or on the incline. Uh, so this helps build up your strength, improve running form. I love a big fan of hill workouts and it can also build up your lactate uh, threshold fitness as you get more speed endurance. So finding and training at your lactate threshold is one of the best things you can do to run stronger, longer, and smarter. It, it can help you personalize your training zone so you're not just guessing, helps prevent undertraining or overtraining, and so you can know uh, you're training at the, the more precise zones, right? And it makes you faster, period. It doesn't need to be complicated. You just use a 30-minute field test or talk test if you're just getting started. And basic workouts around that threshold pace or heart rate, especially when you're doing like zone two, you want to use that heart rate. And maybe if you're doing the faster zones, you can rely more on pace or a combination of things. And adjust, again, every three to six months as your fitness levels improve, retest your lactate threshold. And do you want help personalizing your running training including dialing your lactate threshold, heart rate zones, injury prevention, and even strength training for runners. Check out my free training link in the description below. I'll walk you through how to run pain-free, get faster, and take your training to the next level. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you found this useful, especially if you're planning to try the field test. I'd love to hear your results.